them think that it's reality. Well, dreams, they feel real while we're in them, right? It's only when we wake up that we realize something is actually strange. Welcome in, everybody, to another Q Code Dream Episode. Good job, Trap. This happens every week. Because <laughs> <laughs> you just want to so bad. But we thank everybody for listening to la- our last Dream Episode, which was, if I can remember, and I can't, which was it? <laughs> Some tunnel. No, no, it was the transportation. The future of transportation future of is transportation. here. <laughs> so, here. if you were curious of how the transportation industry would be in the future, and you guessed a giant friggin' caterpillar that you would ride in, <laughs> you were correct. <laughs> And you only had to wait to the last two minutes of that. I, mean, I know, the last, episode. it's usually the last <laughs> sentence. You're like, oh, okay, there it is. <laughs> so, thank you guys. It's because of you guys that we do this. Yes. And I remember listening <laughs> back to that to do the show notes. And we really were invested in explaining how this all worked at the end in a step by step basis. Because we'd be like, People in pod, pod in slime, <laughs> slime in, and tribe like in fanny pack. I'm like no, people in pod, pod in slime, slime in caterpillar pouch. So like a fanny pack, you, yeah, <laughs> like a fanny pack. So um, we've got another great dream for you today, as I assume. Um, and no, yeah, this is a poor. Dream. This is a poor dream. I don't know. So, I mean, yeah, some of them are better than others. Some of them are like really dull, but I mean, what can you do? He can't like control them. <laughs> are you saying like, which ones are dull? Um, well, of the last few that we've done, like the tunnel trick one was pretty dull. I mean, it had some funny parts, but it was just literally, <laughs> you made some people laugh. They invited you to go on an off-roading trip in their Jeep <laughs> and then they got stuck. That's true. The highlight of that dream was probably the, uh, girl with the ice ice sculpture so and that was the beginning but it's always interesting to see what type of shenanigans he gets into each week so (laughs) let's uh go ahead and jump right into it this is kind of a bigger one i can i can feel it thanks trav (laughs) you what i'm just saying you're complimenting my dream i know i know what you're doing and it was (laughs) gross because of after what i said like i mean i was making sort of a joke but then you made it really gross and awkward so (laughs) thanks trav because i said this is kind of big i can feel it thanks and then the way you said it was thanks trav (laughs) Uh, okay here we go so dream uh this is a dream episode volume well number 28 Yep. 28? 28. Dying. And the name of this dream is Rainbow Rainbow Crabs and Broken Pools. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Here so no we, words going to go? I have no clue. I bet, something about rainbow crabs and broken pools. <laughs> it's not really a question of, because you're, you're, your titles are pretty literal. It's usually just like, when do they come into play? Mostly at the, the beginning. Very, it's mostly and, at the very end. But. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The family and I are on vacation. From the looks of things, we have rented out a nice home from Airbnb. We are all live. We are all in the living room, and I tell the whole family to gather around. <laughs> it's like, gather around, everybody. Let me tell you a tale. <laughs> <laughs> I will admit that the gut feel that I had in this dream, although. I was just me at my current age, but yet internally I felt more like I was a grandfather. Like the wise old man. Yeah. Gather round as I tell you a tale of Paul Bunyan and his ox. (laughs) Big blue. (laughs) Wait, how did you know? (laughs) So in the living room and I tell the whole family to gather round as I have found an old book I had published years ago. I explained to them, 
I had interviewed many people over the years and hence wrote a series of short stories about their lives that I had comp- compiled into this book. They all seemed fairly intrigued, so I decided to play a little game. I told the children to each pick a random number. I would then read the story in the book that corresponded with that figure. I began reading story after story as each child picked a number. However, eventually I began getting very bored with this game. <laughs> As as one would with like I I've found that I like I'll start a game with my kids, you know like oh hey let's play a game like I will give you some clues about some Disney characters and you gotta guess it yeah it's only meant to play like one round <laughs> but they want to but they playing. want to play it for the rest of your life <laughs> so every time I get in the car my daughter's like. Let's play guess the character. And I'm like, no, just let's play be quiet and just let me just drive. I don't I don't need I don't need to play a game. Like I started this game with my kids the other day where I called it like the steamroller game, you know. And I was just cuz it was cuz I was tired and I was laying on the bed and I didn't want to have to do anything other than just roll around. And then they'd have to like <laughs> jump over me as I would come by each time. So like, then there's just like you're tired yeah. and that's what you want to do. That is a very I mean, I know what you're doing and that is very tiring. Picturing it in my head is just the funniest. It's exhausting. <laughs> it's just Danny just like arms limp and flail just <laughs> pretty much I'm like I'm coming. <laughs> but yeah, they just want to keep playing it and playing it and playing it. And so, and then you get tired of rolling and you start getting kind of dizzy. <laughs> <laughs> and so I had to change the game and I called it walking on my bumby. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just where I get to lay there and they just walk on my back and my butt. And I sing <laughs> walking on my bumby. Whoa. Don't feel good. <laughs> Is so strange. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm saying I concur. I agree with you, Trav. Sometimes you start games and then you find yourself in awkward situations. Mine was trying to. Oh, you- mine was called Guess the Character. Yours is called Walking on My Bum. <laughs> <laughs> As someone who doesn't have kids, all you have to do is think a little bit ahead, right? You don't. Um, Okay, I'm going to make the rule where I have to roll around. <laughs> this couldn't possibly get tiring <laughs> or old. I just <laughs> I can just see you like think ahead be like, "No way in hell am I rolling around for the next 5 hours." <laughs> just see you laying on the bed like in the morning, like Saturday morning your kids come to wake you up and you're like, uh, "Go away." But dad, we want to we want to play a game. Fine. Let's play walking on my bumby. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So I began getting very bored with this game. I looked at everyone around me and could see that they were trying their best to be good, to be a good engaged audience, but they too were fading fast. Honestly, this is the most uninteresting book I've ever read. It was basically a summary of a typical day for each person I interviewed within the book, recognizing that my audience would have a much better time if they were excused, in addition to the fact that I couldn't read another one of these dull stories. (laughs) Stood up and told everyone, We are done reading for the day. The kids immediately got up and scampered away, happy to finally be free of this tedious torture. (laughs) It's your book. I know. I forgot how boring it was, though. <laughs> it was literally just, I woke up, go to the bathroom. Get it, was a, it was a mild on. BM. It was okay. It wasn't like anything <laughs> crazy. It was anything to shake a stick at. <laughs> In fact, I just threw soft paper at it and uh, flushed it down. After, after story time ended, I decided to head back to my bedroom to put the book away. When I walked in, I was a bit surprised to see two miniature people. <laughs> Again. It's Again, been a while, he has it's been a while since he's had miniature people in his dreams. It was a bit surprised. <laughs> like how often <laughs> These Why are do you dream these are of dwarves. They're miniature people. <laughs> yeah, it's different. 
okay, do you explain that a little bit more? Because, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Two miniature people, one man and one mo- woman, standing on top of a desk located against a wall. I wasn't so much surprised <laughs> that the pair of human humans hanging out in my room were three inches tall. <laughs> Rather, I was just flabbergasted that there were people in my room when I wasn't expecting it. <laughs> you couldn't be Wait, both. How how tall? <laughs> Three inches tall. He's, so he's like fairies. Yeah, he's not. He's not flabbergasted at the fact that there are three inch tall people in his room. It's just the fact that there are people <laughs> that I wasn't he wasn't expecting. expecting. <laughs> For whatever reason, I wasn't like. <gasps> There's little people. I was just like, oh. What, what do you but you couldn't be here? both. Like I think I'd be both. Like oh crap! I, people, three. You guys are super tiny. <laughs> you, guys, <laughs> you guys are so tiny. I asked them what they were doing in my room. However, before I could get an answer, the two of them quickly ran over to their small frisbee-sized flying saucer-looking vehicle <laughs> and took off. I watched as the disc flew around the room haphazardly, but then suddenly began to shrink until it was small enough to fit through a crack in between two drawers of <laughs> the dress. They're now like super duper tiny. <laughs> Is this like kind of like the magic school bus? Kind of, but they already started out small. Magic school bus? And they got smaller. It's kind of like, you no, know, they were already really small in that movie where Martin Short <laughs> gets like injected with that guy in the little spaceship, right? <laughs> Where they go through his body? Inner yeah. space? Inner space, yeah. <clears throat> that was a good movie. Yeah. It's also in the 1970s, 80s. <laughs> I think 80s. But. I'm not saying that that's bad. I'm just saying that that's about the era that you remember things. So, <laughs> Not knowing quite what to do at this moment, I briskly walked over to the dresser and opened the drawer to see where this small spaceship had gone. To my dismay, when I opened the drawer, there were no UFOs in sight. <laughs> He's just like head hanging down. Liz comes in. She's like, "What's wrong?" I open the drawer and there's no UFOs. <laughs> <laughs> just Not expect, one in sight. I just expect when I open the drawer. Instead, what I found was much more tr- much more troubling than no UFOs in your <laughs> in your drawer. My wife had purchased a duo of crabs to take home as pets and was hiding them from me in the bottom drawer of this dresser. <laughs> Having crabs. <laughs> <laughs> having crabs. <laughs> and he's like, I don't like having crabs. <laughs> having crabs as pets is bad enough on its own. However, I knew right away that these were no earthborn crabs, but instead were alien crabs. <laughs> this particular species of alien was very dangerous and had the ability to shape shift into any form. I called my wife into the room to inquire about her hidden crabs. <laughs> I didn't even think of it. Babe, (laughs) why did you not tell me about your crabs? (laughs) Feel like this is something we should talk about. (laughs) How did you get crabs? Literally, when I was writing this and dreaming it, I was like, no, these are legit crabs. (laughs) Like animal crabs. It reminds me of a joke. But I forget the comedian, but he's like, he's one of those comedians where he just, he has one liners. And one of his jokes was, my girlfriend has crabs, so I bought her fishnet stockings. <laughs> so like oh. Mitch Hedberg, maybe? I don't know. No, it was a different guy. Like Steve something. He has like weird, crazy hair. And he looks like a gorilla. <laughs> <laughs> but as I talked to her, my his wife, I could tell that she had no idea that they were of alien origin and thought that they were regular crabs. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you get these alien crabs? In fact, the more I told her that they were an alien species, the more she thought I was just messing with her and pulling her leg. Well, no, duh. How do you know they're alien? I just knew. Like, apparently, I'm very uh, studied up in the alien crab species. <laughs> knowledgeable. Yeah, knowledgeable. I'm, I'm very studied up. <laughs> <laughs> I drew a blank. I couldn't think at, of the word. <laughs> at this point, I knew that the only way to get her to believe me was to have her witness some of their abilities with her own eyes. I spent the next couple of hours trying to point out all of the strange things that were occurring with the crabs to my wife <laughs> in hopes that she would come 
<laughs> to the realization that these are indeed alien crabs. <laughs> He's just like, they're sitting on the bed. He's like, did you see that? <laughs> He's like, move. <laughs> Definitely alien. <laughs> No ordinary crab would he's do that. He's staring at me all weird. You know he's from Mars. <laughs> I began by opening the bottom drawer again so that she can see the two crabs sitting there. I then closed the bottom drawer and opened the drawer above it. Sure enough, the two crabs were now sitting in the upper drawer. See? How do you explain <laughs> that? I say. My wife just shrugs as she's not convinced of anything yet. A few minutes later, I point out to my wife that the crabs were roughly the same size a couple minutes ago. Now one is half the size it was previously, and the other is twice the size it was previously. Still, she could not seem to see the changes that were so apparent to me. <laughs> later on... So there's a conservation of size, though. <laughs> like, one goes down by half, the other has to double. I guess... But it would seemed obvious that you should be like, oh, that's not normal crab behavior. <laughs> you know what's not normal? Having crabs. <laughs> <laughs> Just in your drawers. <laughs> <laughs> you see where this is going here? I think this is seriously like, I'm not one to believe that there is something going on in your subconscious all the time, but this is definitely, this is blatant. <laughs> You have crabs in your drawers. <laughs> <laughs> not, <laughs> not just any crabs. Alien, alien crabs. crabs. <laughs> Later on, I again point out when one of the crabs shapeshifted into a purse. <laughs> See? Why does the crab look like a purse now? <laughs> I ask. This time, I'm sure my wife thinks I'm just pointing to a purse. <laughs> that was already there. <laughs> It doesn't take long for the alien crabs to change again, this time fluctuating from the traditional red tint you see on most crabs to a multicolor rainbow variety. Surely she How do you know they were alien crabs and not just alien purses that had shape-shifted into crabs? Yeah. Because I was very knowledgeable. Remember, he was, he was, was very studied, studied up. up on the <laughs> alien crabs. Surely she will notice that this is strange, I think to myself. Yet again, the color shift does not seem to phase her. It's not until one of the crabs alters... Ooh, alters itself into the size of a quarter and commences to scurry across the floor and attempt to escape that my wife begins to notice that something is off. She's like, hmm... <laughs> Is that the size of a quarter? The purse thing, the colors, n not, that seemed normal. But the crab is tiny now and is trying to escape. <laughs> <laughs> if, they could, if they can change their size and they're trying to escape, why would you go tiny? Just go huge. I don't know. I didn't ask the crab any questions. Is there some <laughs> dumb alien crab? <laughs> I quickly grabbed a juice tumbler from the bathroom counter and placed it over the would-be fugitive. Once the little crab realized it was trapped, it began to grow and shapeshift sporadically in hopes that it would, or that it could escape the glass container. The more it grew and thrashed around, the more difficult it was to contain under the cup. Eventually, it began to grow tentacles that were able to partially make their way out from under the edge of the glass and it took everything I had to keep it pinned down on the floor. <laughs> like standing on the... <laughs> Let's go! Try to escape! <laughs> I wasn't standing, but I was pushing with all my weight <laughs> with my hands and my upper body. At this point, the creature began to scream by releasing an awful high-pitched screech. <laughs> Kind of, but even more, like, throaty. <laughs> I looked over at my wife for a bit, for a bit of help. She, she looked at me and said, yeah, okay, I believe you now. These, these are alien crabs. I immediately felt a brief moment of vindication, but then refocused on the task at hand. <laughs> <laughs> it's like so I'm trying to tell you I'm so glad you come to my realization 
Go get my brother Steve and tell him to bring a knife, I yell. My wife then bolted out of the room in search of my sibling. <laughs> Why is Steve at your house? <laughs> he just was at the Airbnb with us. Oh, that's right. I forget you guys are at an Airbnb. A couple minutes later, my wife returned with my brother. I looked up and, and tell him I'm going to need his help to exterminate these aliens. By this point, both crabs had, had transformed themselves into worms that were over two feet long. I picked them up and placed them on a tray located on top of the room service cart. Steve and I already knew the only way to kill this type of alien is to cut them up into as many little pieces as possible. Because <laughs> worms have like multiple hearts. And I guess maybe that's where subconsciously I got that from. <laughs> Until their shape-shifting bodies can't regenerate anymore. <laughs> Like you said, we already knew that this is how we do it. <laughs> Remember the last time we killed aliens? <laughs> We're going to do the same thing. Once again, I was very studied up. <laughs> this is like an episode of Supernatural or something. <laughs> Steve is holding two knives in his hand and gives one of them to me. We then each pick up a fork from the room service cart and began cutting into the foul beasts. As if we were eating a steak dinner. This frantic cutting motion continued for the better part of the next 10 minutes. Oh, man, this is like a massacre. <laughs> you have to cut them into little pieces. Finally, to make sure. <laughs> the two of us were convinced that we had done a thorough enough job and dropped our utensils down on the cart. Just when we thought it was safe to rest. One section of the aliens we had just chopped up began to rig wriggle. <laughs> wriggle and move around. Suddenly, without warning, is grew in size, <laughs> then exploded into a hundred little rubber-looking toy pandas. <laughs> what? Uh, it's scary. <laughs> <laughs> I hastily grabbed an empty box and began scooping the little pandas inside as to try and contain them before they could escape and begin to wreak havoc. Around the house. Once again, Steve and I resume our cutting positions and go to town. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> so you're literally cutting them like they're steaks. Like, do you have the fork in one hand and the other one? He's like, <laughs> <laughs> like exactly. the scraping on the dish. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Finally, the A1. <laughs> Finally, after several more minutes, we successfully severed the miniature pandas into enough pieces that the alien was no longer able to revive itself. <sighs> Exhausted, yet satisfied with a job well done, I laid back on the bed to get a moment of rest. <laughs> Just, all right, good night. <laughs> Do you know how tiring it is to go for like 20 minutes straight? Just like, <laughs> come on, come on, come on, come on. It's just, a, just like a little handheld steak knife. <laughs> so just like, you couldn't find anything else. I don't know. I mean, it, it was a little bigger than a steak knife, but. You yeah. couldn't find like one of those axes that are in like the break glass if you need it, whatever. We were just at an Airbnb. There's not just axes in a break glass. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, this rest didn't last long as my phone suddenly began to ring. I answer the phone and can and can hear that it's my buddy. <laughs> it's my buddy, whom happened to be a swimming pool repair man. <laughs> He tells me that he's been hired to do a big job at some rich person's house and wanted to know if I wanted to come an, along and help him with the repairs. I told him that my wife and brother were with me and asked if they could come as well. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> like, as if he's inviting you to the movies or something. <laughs> hey, Dan, this is your buddy. The repair, the pool repair man. <laughs> Got a big job from a rich person to repair a pool. Just wanted to know if you wanted to join in. Danny's like, well, um, my brother and my wife are here. Can they come? <laughs> sure, he says. He Liam Neeson. Sure, you bring it. Sure, he says, the more the merrier. I tell him we're in 
and he shows up at the house a few minutes later to pick us up at the Airbnb. <laughs> <laughs> well, he just happened to be in town because that's where the job was. <laughs> I've got a job. It's from rich people. <laughs> It's a big job, see? <laughs> That's the Liam Neeson. <laughs> He's I'll like a and, gangster. I'll come it's and a pe- big job, see? No, it's Liam Neeson. <laughs> well, I know, but... Mixed with a little with gangster. A gangster. Oh. It's like, see? Oh. I'll come pick you up. Ten minutes. Be ready. <laughs> I'm going to require your very special set of crab skills. <laughs> Oh, oh, and Danny, make sure wear your swimsuit, okay? <laughs> Gets kind of wet. Um, <laughs> we all pile into his truck and head over to the house the pool is located at. Once we arrive at the house, my wife instantly recognizes it. She tells me that she knows the owners of this house because she used to live here years ago. She's also familiar with the pool and says, It's very nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice, Liz. (laughs) We walk up to the front door, knock, and wait for the owner of the home to answer. Once the owner of the home answered the door, we introduced ourselves before he invited us in and led us downstairs into the basement to where the indoor pool was located. As I emerged from the stairwell and into an open space within the basement, I'm amazed at how grandiose this pool is. It takes up the majority of this huge basement square f- this huge basement square footage as it sprawls out in every direction and was even broken up into various sections. There was a main tile floor walkway that wound its way through the various sections of the pool. Each section of the pool was then enclosed within its own glass walls. So for instance, if you wanted to go from the kiddie pool section to another section, you would have to get out of the pool walk to the glass door and open it. This would lead you into the winding tile floor hallway. <laughs> Good <laughs> heavens. <laughs> At this point, you could then walk down the hall and open another glass door that led into another section of the pool. Did you guys catch all that? I did. Did you? All I know is that you're in one pool. Basically, the pools are separated by rooms. <laughs> but... <laughs> Yeah, with glass walls, so you can see. <laughs> like you can see everything. But. You'd have to get out of the pool, go and open a door, walk, open a door, and get into the other pool. <laughs> 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 One of these sections really catches my eye, as I can see that it is about 50 feet deep, damn, and looks like it was designed after the aesthetic of Lake Powell or something. <laughs> It's got red rock scaling the walls, both above and below the waterline. There are caves. (laughs) He loves caves. There are caves hidden under the water's surface, which can be explored. This section is used by divers who are learning how to scuba dive, as well as free divers. It gives them a place to train, while also giving them something to look at while doing so. (laughs) They're not just caves. They're also uh, eye candy. <laughs> the owner of the home let us down to the top. When, when I'm when I'm training to go underwater and survive, <laughs> I also like eye candy. I like to look at things. I like to look at nice red rock. It's more yeah. entertaining. Haven't you guys ever like if you when you're exercising, it's more enjoyable to exercise and like listen to something or watch a show. Maybe if I ever exercise. But when you're training (laughs) to scuba dive, you don't want distractions. You're not just like, hey, Tim, what are you looking at? Oh, sorry. (laughs) That red rock is... I was looking at this fake wall here. It's amazing. (laughs) (laughs) Look at at all the caves. The owner of the home led us down to the tile floor hallway toward the pool's control panel room. On the way there, I could see through the glass walls that the owner's extended family and friends were all enjoying a day at the pool. As we continued down the hall, we walked past a huge 20-foot tall, very hairy man. 20 what? 20-foot tall, very hairy man. (laughs) He was was so tall. How tall was he? (laughs) That I didn't even see his face. (laughs) But rather just saw him from his chest down. (laughs) I would bet you if he was 20 feet tall, you would not be looking at his chest. (laughs) Uh, Well, I'm just 
saying from my vantage point, I'm kind of looking up a little. Like, my bet is you'd probably be looking around the shin area. <laughs> 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 Touche. <laughs> as long as it was a humanoid. Uh, but it, rather, was, it was a humanoid. However, I did feel bad for the guy as everyone who walked past him seemed to have a fat joke or two. He's not fat. <laughs> He's a 20 foot tall man. He also had like a little gut, you know. Well, so what? <laughs> He's a 20 foot tall man. He'd be like, huh. <laughs> Every time you turn around, it's your birthday, huh? <laughs> 20 feet tall with girth to have a gut. This man must weigh like five tons a, at least. Let's just say his name's Roger. Okay? He's, He's like, like four or five elephants. Roger gets a sunburn. Everybody's like, oh, here comes the Kool-Aid man. <laughs> here he comes. And then he just... Walks and he's like he doesn't. Hey, like, hey, 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 Ro- hey. hey Roger, is that what you think the Kool Aid Man says? <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was like, that's Fat Albert. Oh yeah. I got the two mixed up. <laughs> 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 I always love the joke when I was a kid. It's like, what does Fat Albert say when he takes a dump? Hey, hey, hey. bombs away. <laughs> but I don't know why. Like I said, I was a younger kid, and I thought it was hilarious. Um, but it is, oh, yeah. <laughs> so they yeah. did have a fat joke or two to crack at his expense. Although I didn't agree with this treatment, I do have to handle it, hand it to the large man, as he was a good sport and took the comments in stride. Yeah, because he, he probably knew he could just step on him and murder him. <laughs> a moment later, we entered the pool's control room, control panel room, the pool repair man began to unscrew the metal coverings that were concealed, concealing all the inner parts of this lavish chlor, chlorinated water system. <laughs> what was so hard about that? Joke? I don't know. That word was just really hard for me to read for some reason. <laughs> this lavish <laughs> cook. <laughs> Chlorinated <laughs> and study it, stutter that much as I stutter the word stutter. He then turned to Steve and asked him if he would resume taking the rest of the panel coverings off. In the meantime, he would begin working on the panel that was right in front of him and begin diagnosing the problem. The owner of the home then mentioned that he would need that he needed to go upstairs for a few minutes and asked my wife if she would mind being a scuba safety watch. She agreed and was handed a waterproof flashlight. This was just in case a diver were to get stuck or lost in the depths of the pool, at which point she'd have to go look for them. How? <laughs> she'd have to jump in with the flashlight and like find them. Does so, she have scuba gear? So all these people <laughs> that like you just, there. all these people with no qualifications that you just dragged along, is like, can they come? <laughs> He's giving very important jobs to <laughs> That you need a lot of training for. <laughs> Here, take this. Finish taking this panel apart. <laughs> I don't know what this panel is, <laughs> but okay, <laughs> I'll rip it apart. Yeah. So she accepted this, and she seemed very comfortable taking on this responsibility. So I figured she must have done this many times before when she lived here. I personally was not assigned a task. <laughs> <laughs> So I asked my wife if she'd like me t- like to enjoy some time with me in the scuba diving section of the pool, if you know what I mean. He didn't say that. But scuba, scuba. While we were waiting for my friend and Steve to fix the issue, my wife thought it was a good idea, handed me the flashlight, and ran out to the truck to get our towels. While she was gone, I decided to venture to the edge of the scuba diving area of the pool and looked in. As I stared into the dark depths of the pool, I suddenly remembered that I do not handle the crushing pressures that deep water exerts on your body very well. <laughs> hey, you're not an alien crab. Hence, I became increasingly nervous about going into the deep end of the pool. <laughs> well, you don't have to sink down to the bottom. <laughs> Nobody's telling you to go 50 feet below. I was just worried that if, just in case, Liz is like, let's dive. And I didn't want to like be look like a wuss, <laughs> but I didn't want to get like that pressure on my head. You know? 
<laughs> I turned around just in time to see my wife walking back into the pool area with her towel draped over her arm. However, I could not see my towel and squinted my eyes to get a closer look. <laughs> I then walked toward her and asked her, where my towel? Where, where my towel was? But before... <laughs> Where my towel? Where's my towel? <laughs> That's how you say. Like, Where my towel? <laughs> I thought it was something that you actually said, but it was just you were just never mind. Uh, but before I could get the words out, I found my towel wrapped around a baby who was enjoying a nice piggyback f- ride from my wife. <laughs> a bit confused, I asked my wife where the baby came from. Nevertheless, internally, I was excited about the odd turn of events, as I know that. Deep water diving is bad for young babies, <laughs> and therefore would prevent us from diving so deeply. <laughs> he seriously brushes off the fact that she found a baby, and is just happy that now a baby has been in, <laughs> involved in this activity, which means that we do not have to dive deep. <laughs> I explained to this. I explained well, this to my wife for babies. <laughs> I explained this to my wife while trying to act a little put out about the fact that we can't dive right now. <laughs> so now he's like, kind of like pretending to be pissed. <laughs> oh shoot! <laughs> now that we have a baby, we can't dive very deep. <laughs> Such a manipulator. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, where the heck am I? (laughs) Yet secretly, I'm grateful for this baby (laughs) as it has created a built in excuse for me to avoid the heavy water pressures I was dreading. (laughs) Did you already say that? No, he just said it again. (laughs) I said it a different way. (laughs) Mm -hmm. You know how he likes to reiterate just in different words. (laughs) My wife, the baby, and I all decided to go swimming. The baby is like, yeah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> the baby gets one third vote. <laughs> My wife, the baby, and I all decided to go swim in the kiddie pool section and walked out to the diving. You're supposed to be watching the divers. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> Walked out no of the diving you area. You a task. <laughs> you can't even do one simple thing like watch this water. <laughs> uh, I went to the kiddie pool section and walked out of the diving area and into the tile floor hall. As we walked through the hall toward our destination, I watched as a group of three teenage girls, all wearing red Baywatch looking swimsuits, leap about 10 feet into the air and executed a perfectly time high dive at the precipice of their jumps. High five is what it should say. Did I write high dive? <laughs> no, no, you said high five. Oh. Timed high five. I just kind of assumed <laughs> perfectly that timed that was... high dive. Why not? You're it's in... A, yeah. <laughs> is that like so weird to think about that somebody could be doing a high dive it's, it's called synchronized you're swimming. literally in a house with a million pools <laughs> I guess he's all a like, group of like three girls he's like they're coming three girls come out in swimsuits and do a perfectly timed <laughs> high five <laughs> Okay, I say high dive, and this is like, whoa, whoa. Like, there's, how did you get high dive? Like, what would that wouldn't even make sense right now? <laughs> so, so they uh, did it in Ninja Turtles high five. <laughs> Perfectly yeah, timed high really five at the precipice of their jumps. <laughs> they then all descended back down toward the floor as one would do once you jump because gravity (laughs) takes a hold of you and pulls you back down two of the three girls landed just fine however the third girl unfortunately landed partially in a shopping cart (laughs) (laughs) that had somehow ended up smack dab in the middle of her landing zone how wait they did they weren't already just standing on the ground and then jumped up and then no they did they They jumped how high did they jump 10 Ah, feet 10 feet in the air and then crazy that's another reason I thought they were diving. Yeah. This is so athletic. <laughs> These are the high jump Olympic <laughs> all you, stars here. Like, do you think that there's like an invisible, like, uh, kind of like 
leprechaun creature that is popping in and out of your dream, causing just mischief. <laughs> It's like your wife goes out to get towels and he pops out and maybe places a baby in the car. That's when she (laughs) finds it. And then you see these three girls and they jump and do a high five. But here pops the leprechaun and puts in a shopping shopping cart. cart. (laughs) (laughs) And and I can just see him just like... (laughs) And then just away again. (laughs) And then she tries to land. (laughs) Yeah, because the shopping cart wasn't there when they jumped, but it was there when they landed. So she landed in a shopping cart that had somehow ended up smack dab in the middle of her landing zone. For this reason, one of her feet got stuck inside the shopping cart, causing her to stubble. (laughs) (laughs) Causing her to stubble and fall. (laughs) It's stubble. (laughs) Sometimes I read it wrong, but there you look at it. It's stubble. Causing her to stubble and fall. Lucky for her, her friends were right there and were able to catch her. They helped her to remove her foot from the shopping cart and all resumed talking and laughing about what had just occurred. This is when I woke up. <laughs> They're like, <laughs> remember when we just jumped 10 feet in the air and like high fived and then you fell in a shopping cart? <laughs> 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 We're going to remember about this for the rest of our lives. So funny. And then Bridget and I caught you. Your foot got stuck. That was so funny. <laughs> remember when Liz found the baby? <laughs> oh my gosh. And the baby chose on its equal footing to go swimming in the kiddie pool. <laughs> <laughs> That's the wrong word, not yeah. equal footing. <laughs> Remember how Danny didn't even get a job? (laughs) (laughs) All right. Rainbow crabs and broken pools. Very literal. The leprechaun could have been the alien crabs. He could have. Just a mischievous little dude like creature. Maybe it's not a leprechaun. Maybe we missed one of those little pandas. In uh, it turned into a maybe. leprechaun, a trickster, trickster. Yes, from from supernatural. Supernatural, because I know you're watching it, so I just can't remember what it was called. Just a trickster, <laughs> just coming in, popping in and out, causing mischief and mayhem. Yep. So, all right. Well, that is it, everyone. Um, just a reminder: we do release these every. Monday. <laughs> I couldn't remember. <laughs> I was going to get it mixed up with our regular episodes that are released every Friday. So make sure to catch us on whatever platform you're listening to us on right now. Guess what? You can just return to this platform next week and, and we'll be, be here. There. So every Friday, every Monday. Um, coming up, I don't, uh, just as a uh, kind of a forewarning, uh, we are going to be, and, and we'll give you the dates. Um, later but we are going to be missing some time during the holidays where we will not have these dreams but we will keep you updated on when that will be so that you will um, know for sure when they're not happening and when we will return and it'll so, just be a couple of weeks yeah it'll, it'll be, be a, a long hiatus yeah we just need we we need some time because <laughs> we're we've got i'm gonna be gone out of town danny's gonna be gone out of town Alan's going to be here, but he's not going to record by himself. So, <laughs> <laughs> Little Tra- do you know. Trav will be out of town. I'll be out of town. Alan will be in town. He'll be in You town. guys come back. I'm like, I recorded five episodes, guys. He'll be <laughs> downtown. Alan's like, we've released. We're on episode 733. <laughs> <laughs> like, we've released so many. Um, so, all right. Yeah. Uh, also... You can catch all of our posts, things like that, on our social media pages, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, at QCode Podcast. You can also visit our website at QCodePodcast.com. Um, and then we do have a a uh, YouTube channel uh, where we post these as well. So just whatever platform is easiest for you to listen to, um, just choose that. You'll find us. We're on, we're on Spotify as well. So I want to we try... make it as easy as possible. I want to try something um, as we end this episode. It just popped into my head. I don't know how it's going to go. Are you going to do reverse psychology? Huh? Don't leave us five stars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Wait, but really do. Okay, so, Trav, why don't you give me a little beat? I'm just going to do, like, an impromptu song about leaving us five stars. Okay. (laughs) What kind of beat? Yes, that's I'm like, whatever, I'll just go with it. Okay. Alan, come in. Add a little bass. This is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I was Add a little bass. Because <laughs> I was going to go. <laughs> oh, then I was fine. like, that's not bass. You can do whatever you want. I don't care. <laughs> Yo, we have got to the end. <laughs> so why don't you go tell a friend? <laughs> And then both of you give us a rating, perhaps ten stars in total, and we be waiting. Okay. All right. I just want to. I'm just really curious. As you're sitting there, why did you think? (laughs) I don't know. I'm gonna rap this. I was just. Well, I didn't know you were gonna come up with a rap. If you came up with a different beat, you said, "Give me a beat." What else could I do? You could have done like jazz. How could you do a jazz beat? (laughs) (laughs) This is so weird right now. Okay. Uh, All right, guys. Thank you for listening. Catch us next week when we come back with another dream episode. Have a good one. Bye.